Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, China taking aim at Washington for cooperating with SpaceX amid accusations of a spy network capable of watching the world from space. But critics point to a lack of fact-checking from Chinese state media. Nearly half of the world's population will vote in a major election this year. Secretary of State Antony Blinken warning that China and Russia are behind disinformation campaigns around the globe. Buying cable TV platforms in Africa and excluding international news channels from subscription packages. Or using local subsidiaries to surreptitiously purchase media companies in Southeast Asia, which then run heavily pro-PRC news. Forest fires ravaging southwest China, killing four and sending thousands fleeing for safety. A look at the blaze spreading across the mountains since the weekend. And 12 sentenced in Hong Kong for participating during a pro-democracy movement five years ago, with jail terms ranging up to seven years. More on the so-called rioting case. Before we delve into today's show, we have a special announcement. A potential ban on TikTok is heating up as experts point to its links to the Chinese communist regime. At the same time, Hollywood is being bought and controlled by Chinese companies, while even the video game industry is slowly being infiltrated. What's really going on here? All roads point to soft power warfare, a signature CCP tactic to gain quiet control. Tomorrow, China in Focus joins Joshua Phillip, host of Crossroads, to discuss these topics in a live special Q&A, where we'll answer your questions and shed light on these issues. Tune into Epic TV tomorrow, March 19th at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Visit theepictimes.com slash Epic TV or click the link down below if you're watching online. Shamelessness and double standards. That's the message from Beijing's military as it lashed out at Washington following an anonymous report. Reuters reported last Saturday that SpaceX is building a network on a $1.8 billion classified contract with a U.S. intelligence agency. The program allegedly involves hundreds of spy satellites. If successful, the network could advance the White House and the Pentagon's ability to keep an eye on targets globally. The news cited anonymous sources and failed to make it to most media headlines. On the Chinese military's social media account, where it has over a million followers, it accused the U.S. government of threatening global security and of using space development to bolster the U.S. military. The post also embedded pushback on Washington's sanctions on several Chinese tech companies. U.S. lawmakers have warned about those Chinese firms tied to intellectual property theft cases and threats to U.S. national security. SpaceX and the Pentagon did not respond to media requests for comments on China's reaction. Back to the satellite network, Elon Musk's program has played a vital role in the Ukraine battlefield, aiding the Pentagon and its allies. But the program is putting Beijing and Moscow under pressure. Beijing announced it's building the country's own network, like Starlink this year, with 26,000 satellites, which is five times more than that of the U.S. The communist regime ordered its military experts to study the network two years ago. Over in Russia, Moscow is preparing space weapons that could destroy the entire satellite network. To discuss China's accusations over the reported SpaceX spy satellites, plus the potential TikTok ban, we sat down with Jimmy Quinn, national security correspondent for the National Review. Jimmy Quinn, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thanks so much for having me. China's military and state media are accusing the U.S. of threatening global security over a Reuters report that says SpaceX is building spy satellites for U.S. intelligence. Now, what do you think of China's reaction here, despite this report relying on anonymous sources? If this report is true, it's something that the Chinese military should be very concerned about, but it's it's no threat to uh, international security. We're talking about a regime that has threatened to invade the democracy on its doorstep, Taiwan. Uh, It has totally malign ambitions. And for the U.S. government to work with federal defense contractors to understand that threat uh, in a deeper way, that's a good thing uh, for Americans, for the world, and for global peace. Uh, And to see uh, China react in this way is a bit hypocritical. 
uh, considering the civil military fusion programs where uh, the Chinese government has basically asserted control over vast swaths of uh, the country's technological sectors. Now, TikTok has been dominating the headlines. The House bipartisanly and overwhelmingly passed this bill. But interestingly, we're seeing people like Donald Trump, Republican Congressman Thomas Massey, and even Elon Musk coming out against this bill. You would think they would be all for it. What are you seeing in terms of why they might be against this? So very interestingly, uh, former President Trump's recent comments seem to suggest that he actually supports the approach that's outlined in the bill. Uh, he did an interview on Fox this weekend and says that he's all for removing China's control over TikTok. And that's what this bill does. It's not about banning TikTok. It's about making sure that ByteDance, which is the a Chinese tech giant that owns the app is not in control of it anymore. I think that people like uh, you mentioned Representative Massey and Elon Musk, um, they're they're well-meaning. They think that uh, you know there are concerns in terms of people's civil liberties and that the bill could be uh, turned against Americans and American firms. Uh, but that's not the case. It's a very narrowly tailored piece of legislation, and it really only goes after. Uh, apps that are controlled by foreign adversaries. Jimmy Quinn, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much. Russian President Vladimir Putin just won a new six-year term after a landslide victory in Russia's election this weekend, a triumph critics are calling illegitimate. After his re-election, Putin vowed to strengthen China-Russia relations in the coming years. We have lots of coinciding points of interest, both in the economy and in international politics. I am confident that we will be strengthening all of these within the coming year. Putin praised China Monday for what he called its success on the world stage, including the Belt and Road Initiative. Many countries consider the infrastructure program as a tool the Chinese Communist Party uses to expand its global control. Putin also said Russia recognizes Taiwan as part of China. He condemned countries that stage, in his words, provocations around the island, as well as nations that sanction China. The Chinese Communist Party has never ruled Taiwan. It's governed by its own constitution and democratically elected leaders. In January and February, trade between Russia and China grew about 10 percent. A warning from Secretary of State Antony Blinken about disinformation. More than 60 countries are voting in national elections this year, increasing the risk of false information spreading online. This is an extraordinary election year in country after country. But citizens and candidates will face a flood of falsehoods that suffocate serious civic debate. He gave the warning during the Summit for Democracy in Seoul on Monday. Blinken echoed that China and Russia are often behind global disinformation campaigns. Here's what he said Beijing has been up to. Buying cable TV platforms in Africa and excluding international news channels from subscription packages. Or using local subsidiaries to surreptitiously purchase media companies in Southeast Asia, which then run heavily pro-PRC news. The summit's main agenda looked to discuss using technology to promote democracy and human rights, as well as counter online threats. South Korea invited Taiwan to participate, sparking protest from Beijing. Zooming in on China, the country's southwestern Sichuan province battled with raging forest fires over the weekend. Four are dead and nearly 6,000 were evacuated. The true death toll remains unclear, taking into account the regime's history of covering up disaster casualties. The fire started on Friday and spread quickly because of a sudden gale. A section of highway had to be closed due to thick smoke. As of Monday, firefighters were still working to bring the flames under control. 2,000 fire crews were deployed along with seven helicopters to battle the blaze. A Hong Kong court sentenced 12 people to prison over the weekend, with the longest jail term being nearly seven years. That's over a high-profile case linked to a pro-democracy protest in 2019, a series of demonstrations in the city against plans to allow extradition to mainland China. Here's more. 
A Hong Kong court sentenced 12 people to prison with terms ranging from more than four years to nearly seven years on Saturday in a high-profile rioting case linked to the storming of the city's legislature during a pro-democracy protest in 2019. The Legislative Council break-in on July 1, 2019 saw protesters smashing windows, streaming inside the building in public anger over an extradition bill that would have allowed authorities to send people to mainland China for trial. It was a pivotal moment in the months of civil unrest in the city, which marked the boldest uprising against the Chinese Communist Party since the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests in Beijing. District Judge Lei Ziho he sentenced actor Gregory Wong, who was earlier found guilty of rioting, to six years and two months in prison. During the trial, Wong said he entered the Legislative Council solely to deliver charges to reporters covering the break-in. Political activist Ventus Lau received a sentence of around four and a half years, and activist Owen Chow was sentenced to over five years in prison. Rioting holds a maximum seven-year sentence in Hong Kong's district court. More than 10,000 people were arrested in relation to the 2019 Hong Kong protests. Police figures say over 2,900 people have been charged so far with offences including rioting, unlawful assembly and criminal damage. You might have noticed how Top Gun Maverick attempted to strip the Taiwanese and Japanese flags off of Tom Cruise's jacket, or how Iron Man 3 inserted a Chinese doctor into the movie who saves the life of Tony Stark. Is it artistic license or something more sinister? These are the issues explored in the groundbreaking new documentary, Hollywood Takeover, China's Control in the Film Industry. The NTD original film pulls back the curtain on how Hollywood is helping to further a global adversary's agenda the consequences that will have on America's future, and what brave individuals are doing to change the tide. The documentary is now available to stream on Epic TV. And for more information about the documentary, please visit HollywoodTakeover.com. There's something magical about the movies that I just love. Hollywood invented America to the world in the old days. And as a medium, it's really powerful. But for some, that power isn't used for good. Sure, our way of life is being censored by the Chinese Communist Party. They said, we get a lot of our money out of China. Is there any way you could make this movie a little bit more attractive to the Chinese? Is it really just about money? Are there other parts at stake? I had friends in Hollywood who said, this will kill your career. You won't get funding. They're afraid of even mentioning one line. Chinese influence was playing into what we see in US films. China said, you can't have that in there. And Hollywood listened. This is insane. This is a joke, right? We raised our hand and we dove right into it. But over time, all of us have been punched in the nose. The Chinese Communist Party followed no rules. What's at stake? The soul of the nation is at stake. We want indoctrination access to America. They could basically take over America without firing a shot because they control access to our minds. And we all know that their goal is global domination. People have been brainwashed without knowing it. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform, Epic TV, where you can watch our full episodes. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Could advances in biotechnology soon grow semiconductors? Experts tell Congress about a coming biotech revolution, one they say China could win. Chinese women appearing unimpressed by Beijing's call for more babies. One woman shares her perspective on why the younger generation is hesitant to embrace the regime's push to boost birth rates. They didn't get that blissful, satisfactory life. Now a lot of women do the math and figure out they won't get great returns. So there's no rush to get married. 
And is the Chinese communist regime benefiting from the Iran-backed Houthi attacks in the Red Sea? A security analyst makes a case about what's happening and how China is waging unrestricted warfare through shipping. That and more after the break here on China in Focus. For round-the-clock original news coverage, visit us at ntd.com or download our NTD app. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you soon.